When you're building a culture of belonging, every word counts. That's why Textio brings the world's most advanced language insights into your hiring and employer brand content. Our industry-leading approach to artificial intelligence and machine learning provides the tools needed to find more diverse candidates. In short, Textio builds more equitable workspaces, guiding businesses and writing more inclusive job posts. And we're building on that success by bringing even more products to the market for all people who share our belief that language matters. Words have power. And at Textio, we harness that power to increase the access and availability of value-driven work for everyone. What's going on, Living Corporate? It's Tristan, and I want to thank you for tapping back in with me as I provide some tips and advice for professionals. Today, we're going to discuss some common mistakes job seekers make with phone screen interviews. With most jobs, before you get to an interview, you have to go through a phone screen. Phone screens are the first step of an interview process where someone from the company calls to gather more information, determine if the candidate has the minimum qualifications, and assess whether they may be a good fit for the role. This is a significant part of the process because if you don't make it through the phone screen, you won't make it to the interview with your potential boss. So let's talk about some mistakes to avoid. First, do not take the call if you're in a distracting environment. Sometimes phone screens are scheduled and some just happen randomly. When they do happen randomly, most candidates are afraid they may miss their opportunity if they don't answer. But if the company is genuinely interested in you, they will leave a message and a callback number for you to get back to them. So if you're out grocery shopping, at an event, or even in the bathroom, let the phone go to voicemail and call back when you're in a better environment. If you happen to pick up the phone because you didn't recognize the number, it's okay to let them know that you aren't in an environment where you can have this conversation at the moment and ask if you could give them a call back within a specified time frame. Next, you have to be prepared to discuss your salary expectations. People often get a little nervous about this. Just know the company is just trying to ensure that your salary expectations align with their budgets and what they're willing to pay. Believe me, you don't want to get too far in the process and realize that they can't accommodate the salary you're seeking. As always, I suggest doing some reflection and research to identify what a reasonable salary range for the position and your experience level would be. When telling them the range you settled on, be sure to leave space for you to adjust later down the line if your understanding of what the role entails changes. You could say something like, well, based on what I know about the role currently, I'm looking for $65,000 to $75,000. If my understanding of the position changes throughout the process, then that range may vary a bit. Always make sure your lowest number is the must have and your highest number is your nice to have. Lastly, make sure to ask about the next steps. Oftentimes, we get so excited that we forget to ask what the process looks like. We all know your anxiety will be on 10 after that phone screen, and a company's silence can make you a nervous wreck. So to ease some of that, ask what to expect as you move forward in the process. Sometimes there are circumstances like PTO that might delay an actual interview. Also, with many of the pandemic restrictions being lifted and vaccinations happening, you might want to ask if the next step is virtual or in person to make sure you're prepared either way. Phone screens set the tone for your interview process with a company. Don't forget to sound enthusiastic while you're on the line to show you're genuinely interested in the position. This tip is brought to you by Tristan of Layfield Resume Consulting. Check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Layfield Resume, or connect with me, Tristan Layfield, on LinkedIn. Living Corporate is brought to you by Doximity. Doximity helps over 2 million medical professionals. We are the largest medical network that includes over 80% of physicians and over 50% of physician assistants and nurse practitioners. We don't take that responsibility lightly and committed to working towards a more equitable world inside and beyond our virtual office walls. If you want to learn more about Doximity, check out your app store at D-O-X-I-M-I-T-Y. That's D-O-X-I-M-I-T-Y.